This is test drive number two of the Ionic 5, all-wheel drive version. We're gonna take it out for a long drive and we're gonna do a charging test. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ready, steady, chart? What? That's right, this time we are going to give you a peek behind the curtain or a view into the black box and show you how the Ionic 5 actually works by focusing on some important numbers. For science! Huh. This is pretty nice. All right, let's ready, steady, chart. This time we are driving the all-wheel drive, long-range, preferred version of the Ionic 5. John had done a test drive of the rear-wheel drive version. If you want to see that video, click here. We will give you a quick impression of the vehicle itself before digging into the data. I will let John tell you how sporty the all-wheel drive version of the Ionic 5 feels. Take it away, John! Well, we tested out the rear-wheel drive Ionic 5 long-range version uh, a few weeks ago. And in terms of acceleration, I would put it in the same category as the BMW i3. Uh, it was definitely a bit more than what the i3 could provide, but it's not a night and day difference. However, the all-wheel drive long-range version of the Ionic 5 is in a completely ca different category of itself. I would put it as spirited, if not more, than the Model Y long-range all-wheel drive version. I haven't uh, driven the uh, performance version of the Model Y, so I can't comment too much on that. But looking at the, uh, the Delta uh, V difference between this guy and the Model Y all-wheel drive, um, I would put them about around the same area. So one last thing I want to emphasize uh, about the Ionic 5 is a little bit of a flaw. You see, the Ionic 5 does not have a rear windshield wiper. And theoretically, the vehicle has the spoiler vents, which are supposed to create this airflow, which cleans the windshield and prevents it from getting dirty. But as you can see throughout our drive, the rear windshield did get pretty dirty. Um, the drive itself, you know, it wasn't especially muddy and the road wasn't all that wet and it still got kind of dirty. It's still possible to see out of it. It's still usable, but mm, it's not ideal. All right, now onto the science part of the video. We want to test the driving and the charging. And in order to test the charging, we need to drain the battery down to 20% uh, or less. So we started with 97% battery in Calgary, which means uh, we need to drive a while to run the battery down. We want to go to Banff and then turn back to come back to a Petro Canada charging station that is located close to Cochrane. Now, when we are driving, we've noticed that the consumption wasn't high enough to run the battery down to 20%. So we went an extra 15 kilometers beyond Banff before turning back. The entire drive was 270 kilometers, out of which uh, 200 kilometers are driven under 110 kilometers per hour speed limit. The other 70 kilometers are driven under 90 kilometers per hour speed limit. Throughout this trip, the ambient temperature is around 6 degrees Celsius. Um, there are some fluctuations, but it's around that neighborhood. So basically, mild winter driving conditions. We use sports mode almost all the time in order to drain the battery. Uh, the cabin heating is on, we set it to 20 degrees. This is where we feel comfortable inside a vehicle. And also the fabled winter mode is on. Now, spoiler alert, uh, throughout our testing and other people's testing, uh, it doesn't seem like the winter mode actually does very much. And in this case, it didn't really do anything. Our focus is on the interaction between the battery temperature, the vehicle's thermal management system, as well as the charging speed. All of these data are not readily displayed on your vehicle's instrument cluster. Instead, you have to read this through the OBD port. So we have the OBD dongle plugged into the OBD port, and we connect this dongle to our phone using either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And then the data is read using a specific app. The app we are using is called Car Scanner. 
This works for EVs as well as ICE vehicles. There are a few parameters that we are going to pay attention to, and here they are. Up top, there are two state of charge measurements. There is a state of charge percentage that is measured by the BMS, or the battery management system. There is another state of charge percentage that is actually the one being displayed by the vehicle. Next, there is the net power of the main battery. A positive number means that power is coming out of the battery, and a negative number means power is going into the battery. There are three temperature measurements that we will track throughout this drive. Battery min, battery max, and coolant 2. On this specific vehicle, there are a total of 16 temperature sensors. Battery min is the temperature reading from the coldest sensor, and battery max is the temperature reading from the hottest sensor. Coolant 2 is the temperature reading of the coolant in the coolant loop of the vehicle's battery. Let's take a look at the battery temperature and the coolant temperature throughout this drive. Just so you know, the Ionic 5 currently does not have the ability to do location-based battery preheating. This is where when you navigate to a charging station on your navigation system, uh, the battery preheats before you get to the charging station. The Ionic 5 does not have this feature yet. More on that later. And what that means is throughout the drive, you're relying on passive heating of the battery only. So as you drive and the battery discharges, the battery will generate heat. The warmer the ambient temperature and the faster you drive, the more passive heating you will get. Here is a nice graph to show you what is happening to all these temperature measurements throughout the drive. Of course, Y axis is the temperature, X axis is the time. And you may look at this and say, whoa, 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 what's happening with the time measurement? Well, the time measurement is correct, although it's measured in kind of a complex way. The OBD app tracks time in this 60 minute cycle. So yes, time is measured correctly. It's just a bit convoluted. Let's focus on the graph. We started with a battery min and battery max of 2 to 4 degrees as represented by the orange and blue lines. The coolant temperature, which is in purple, starts in around the same neighborhood. As we drove beyond Banff and turned back, the temperature all increased. This is the passive heating that I had mentioned. As we completed the 270 km trip, the battery min is at 10 degrees, the battery max is at 14 degrees, and the coolant is square in between at 12 degrees. As far as passive heating is concerned, eh, I would say that isn't bad. Uh, there's about a 10 degrees increase all around. If the Ionic 5 was capable of doing location-based battery preheating, the coolant temperature would be way above the battery temperature. But instead, without the preheating, the coolant temperature simply follows the temperature of the battery. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you have been waiting for, the charging session. Now let's take a look at the numbers before we plug in. We have arrived with 20% battery, and the consumption was 22.6 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. It is not too high, despite the fact that we drove mostly on sport mode and uh, try to run the battery down. The battery minimum temperature is 10 degrees. The battery max is at 14. The Ionic 5 claims to be able to charge at a peak charging speed of over 200 kilowatts something like 220 kilowatts. But in our case, we already know we're not gonna get that. In order to achieve that kind of high charging speed, two things need to happen. One is you need to start at the low state of charge. I think we're more or less okay at around 20%. The other thing is the battery minimum temperature need to reach 25 degrees. We only have 10 degrees, so we already know that high 200 kilowatt charging speed, that's not gonna happen. Now, if you're interested in seeing how the Ionic 5 charges at a really cold winter temperature of minus 24 degrees, click here and watch this video. All right, let's get scientific and let's get charging. 
right away we are getting 73 kilowatts. Not too slow, but a far cry from the 220 kilowatt this vehicle is capable of. The battery is just too cold for that. If you keep an eye on the purple line, which is the coolant temperature, you will notice a spike. This is an indication that the battery heater is on. When the battery heater is on, the coolant is going to be a lot warmer compared to the batteries. Another way to tell whether the battery heater is working is by comparing the charging speed which is displayed by the vehicle, this is the gross charging speed, and comparing that with the OBD charging speed, which is the net charging speed. You will notice that there is a difference of around 5 kilowatts between the gross and the net charging speed. Now where did those extra power go? Well, it's into the battery heater, of course. The Ionic 5 has a 5 kilowatt battery heater, so this difference makes sense. The coolant is getting warmer, and so are the batteries. The Ionic 5's charging speed increases as the battery temperature increases. But there is a quirk. The charging speed increases at 5 degrees intervals, along with the battery temperature. So the charging speed increases at intervals of 0 degrees, 5 degrees, 10, 15, 20, and upon reaching 25 degrees, the vehicle will have its highest charging speed. Right here, the battery minimum has reached 15 degrees, and the charging speed took a step up to 87 kilowatts. When looking at the correlation between battery temperature and charging speed in the Ionic 5, you need to look at the battery minimum temperature. You can only get the highest charging speed if the battery minimum reaches 25 degrees, whereas at the same time, the battery maximum will for certain be above 25 degrees. As we progress in the charging session, notice that we are approaching the peak of the coolant temperature. Let's take a pause here because a couple of things are happening at the same time in this very moment. At this point, the battery minimum has reached 20 degrees, and the net charging speed took another step up once again. The vehicle has now turned off the battery heater, and as you can see, there is no difference between the gross and net charging speed anymore. The coolant will now cool down as it is no longer being heated the battery will still increase in temperature without the help of the battery heater. Just like passive heating during the battery discharge, the battery warms up passively during charging as well. You may be asking, wait, didn't you say the Ionic 5 will charge the fastest when the battery is at 25 degrees? Then why did the battery heater quit after the battery reaches 20 degrees? Well, this has to do with how the state of charge of the battery also limits the charging speed. Remember when I told you the Ionic 5's peak charging speed is over 200 kilowatts? Well, this could only happen when two things line up. The first is that the battery needs to be warm enough, 25 degrees Celsius with battery minimum or above. And your state of charge needs to be in between 0% and 55%. When the battery is charged above 55%, the charging speed drops to around 150 kilowatts, which is still pretty fast. When the battery is charged above 80%, the charging speed will reduce even further. Just like all lithium-ion batteries, the fastest charging speed occurs between 0% and 80%. When you charge a lithium-ion battery between 80% and 100%, it will be slower. So the Ionic 5 in this specific charging session only heated the battery to 20 degrees because it's determined that by the time the battery reaches 25 degrees with battery heating, the state of charge would have been too high to take advantage of the faster charging speed provided by the warmer battery. Therefore, the vehicle has decided that it is not worth it to spend any more energy on battery heating. So that's why it stopped heating at 20 degrees instead of going for 25 degrees. We unplugged when the battery has reached 78%, and the charging speed at that point is 95 kilowatts. The battery minimum temperature is 27 degrees, and the battery maximum temperature is 35 degrees. 
and the coolant has slowly cooled down when the battery heater is off. The entire charging session from 20% to 78% took 35 minutes. Well, I certainly hope you learned a lot about the Ionic 5 by looking at it through more of a uh, data-driven lens. What have we learned? Of course, the Ionic 5 suffers in charging speed when it has a cold battery. And honestly, in the winter time, it's difficult to get a battery up to 25 degrees via natural means or through passive heating. So in the winter times, the 220 kilowatts peak charging speed is not something that's realistic to achieve. However, in the summertime, it's definitely realistic because through leaving the vehicle outside or driving it, it's not too hard to get it to 25 degrees. At around 78% battery, which is where we decided to unplug, the charging speed that the Ionic 5 is sustaining is actually over 90 kilowatts. This is pretty fast for such high state of charge. Most modern EVs would have throttled down the charging speed to around 50 kilowatts at 78% battery. When we tested the Tesla Model Y, at 78% battery, we're charging at 56 kilowatts. When we tested the uh, Volvo XC40 Recharge, at 78% battery, we're getting 50 kilowatts. And remember, both the Model Y and the XC40 are around uh, 15 to $20,000 Canadian more than the Ionic 5. So the Ionic 5 definitely has that advantage where a higher state of charge are still able to charge at a pretty fast charging speed. Now, if you compare this to an older EV design, for example, the uh, Hyundai Kona Electric, which is the one I have and the one I'm sitting in right now, when its battery reaches 78%, the charging speed is at most 35 kilowatts. You compare that to the Ionic 5's 90 kilowatts, it's not even a competition. It isn't a complete discussion about science unless we talk about the future. Remember when I said the Ionic 5 does not have location-based battery preheating yet? Well, Hyundai released some news that they are going to release a software update for the Ionic 5. This, I think this will happen in 2023, where they enabled this very feature. So very soon, you will be able to have your battery preheated upon arrival to a DC fast charger, and hopefully slow charging speed will be a thing of the past. I want to ask you, the viewer, whether or not you're interested in looking at other numbers and parameters that the OBD app measured um, that we didn't talk about today. Some of the ones that could be interesting include numbers around the HVAC system, uh, for example, the HVAC coolant temperature. Uh, we can also take a look at all 16 different temperature sensors inside the battery and see what kind of pattern they produce. There is also this big list of uh, predicted charging time for charging at various charging speeds. So put it in the comments if you're interested in a deep dive into these numbers. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you learned a lot about the Ionic 5 through this uh, data analysis of some of the important numbers. Give us a big thumbs up if you like what we do and subscribe to our channel for more electric vehicle content. My name is Solomon and we'll see you on the next one.